All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with Fire and the Three Houses. But before we get to fix uh, helping these villagers, we got some supports to do. The first is um, Linhart and Marianne. And this is one of the character aspects that I really like about Linhart. Because when crests are involved, he does get much more enthusiastic around people and more inquisitive. Granted, sometimes his curiosity can get the better of him. In the case of Marianne, you know, he's prying a bit too much. But it's nice to see Linhart have this kind of energy towards someone. Because usually he's so distant. And, you know... For Marianne, obviously for her it's difficult because she doesn't like anything associated with her crest, you know, for her it brings her so much misery, but for him it's fascinating and really, really fascinating, and so on. So it's a case of different perspectives, so you know, he finds crest very, you know, very, very, like a very good thing, obviously she finds it like a curse, so, yeah. Again, you can tell she's getting a bit of a, like, she's ha she wants having a bit of a panic attack. Obviously, you know, Linhart's just curious for the sake of research. He doesn't want to use it for blackmail or anything. Again, his intentions are pure, but obviously Marianne, she's just like, crests for her are just a massive negative connotation. So, it's, you know, for, you know it's good. It's, I like to see, you know, I do like how they, you know, she's able to look at her crest more favorably because of him, but he understands as well that crests aren't, you know, to him it's fascinating, but to everyone, you know, they don't perceive it the same way. That would be a discovery well worth making. You know, it's just an interesting to hear his perspective, you know, you have someone who's fascinated with it, and someone who's lived through having the crest and finds it awful. But it's also, yeah, but also because if you see a much more active side of Marianne, because usually she's so quiet and in the shadows, but here she was really, really active and like, obviously she was sad, but really, really pronounced in how much she dislikes crests and all that jazz. And I, yeah, I thought that was really, really interesting. Oh, now we have one of my favorite support chains, actually. Um... Which is Ferdinand von Eyre and Manuela of all things. Because his one is a case of fanboying, but it's really, really lovely about how he goes about it. Because, like, you know, Manuela did inspire him a lot. It's like her performances and so on. She inspired him to become the person he is. And obviously, Manuela, she finds that flattering because, you know, pff, yeah, you know, it's nice to receive that sort of praise. But obviously, Ferdinand, it's, it's more than just, oh, I really like your performance. It's like, you, you made me who I am. And obviously, to him, being able to you know <laughs> being able to finally have alone time with her obviously Tim it's a big 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 deal I mean obviously there's like a romantic interest between them but him it's more just admiration and her she just she admires the praise you know at first it's just a case of being a teacher but then it's like oh I really do admire the praise you give me because you know it's nice to be congratulated granted you know going overboard's a bit too much but obviously because of the type of person Ferdinand is and like the honesty and purity in his words and so on so it's like, <laughs> just, just the two of us. us. Like, oh my. Yes, we are. But obviously, Manuela is kind of the flirtatious type. So obviously, she would dig it very much. Like again, if, if he were to say do this to Shamir, she would be like, could you stop, please? It's 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 a bit too much. I appreciate the praise, but you're going overboard. Same with like Catherine. She'd be like, it, at first she'd be like, oh that's nice, and she's like, all right, chill. Whereas Manuela's like, oh, you want to praise me, do you? That's lovely. Heartbreaking voice. Yeah, so obviously Hugh, no, it's not Hugh, but <laughs> Ferdinand was very inspired by Manuela. And it is cool, it's, it's not just a case of, and again, I like that the sport like it, it's not just a simple case of, oh, I liked you for your beauty. It's like, no, 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 she inspired him in more than ways. She inspired him to take up the sword, you know, to be the way he is. It's more than just physical attraction. And I like that, you know, when, when inspirations can extend more than just skin deep with you, so, so to speak. Yes, yes, I... And obviously they want to try and make it feel more, you know, neutral between them, but you know, naturally, when someone is just so, when you idolize someone so much, you can't help but get a bit excited. But you know, that's just how it is. It's like if I was to meet a celebrity I really, really, really liked, I'd be like, oh boy. Like, and if I was to ever meet someone called me Johnny or Giga in real life, I'd fanboy a little bit too. I mean, I would keep myself restrained, I wouldn't go over the top, but a part of me would want to, you know, You'd be like, oh my god, I'm actually good to see them. So yeah, here we are. We're in Ramaya Village, the Mariah, Mar Ramaya, not Mariah, the Ramaya Calamity. We've got to go yeah. now. So this chapter, when we get to it, it's very much like. Uh, it, to be fair, I. All right. First of all, the situation being bring a really good cavalier killer because certain someone's going to show up, which I didn't know beforehand, and that really fucked with me. Um, but also. Good, high movement really helps and physic really helps or rescue yo good faith spells really really help because you want to sustain people what the hell happened to them I want I'm just thinking what happened to that lot 
Did they read the script of fate swell? Oh god, you don't ever do that! Is he a time to say? What's going on here? They read the script of Fire Emblem Fates. This is horrific! That story was dreadful! Which one? All of them! Oh my god! Yes, we must find Yeah, we have to save the village. <laughs> Kill them all! Nah, but. But if we are this is also one of the more interesting missions because this mission is less about killing people, more about saving people. Obviously, you have to kill the villagers to stop them, but also you need to prioritize saving other units and traversing the more maze-like and blockaded structure of the map. Which again is interesting. It's, inter it's a farm the map that's very objective-focused. It's less about killing people, more just about completing all the other objectives alongside it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I'm gonna go home, but we gotta help them. And we can't just twiddle our thumbs going do 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 Like how everyone says really stuck into self Dorothy. We have to help them. Okay. They seem to be observing the chaos. They must be behind this. Eliminate them and rescue all of the unafflicted villagers. Yeah, other god the other gods still happened to notice that quickly. Well remember Dimitri reacts to this situation not favorably. So this map, I like it. I think it's a cool idea. I think it's structured quite well, and I like that the NPCs, all of them, are on, uh, you know, aren't so stupid and so weak as to get absolutely destroyed. My only problem with this map is it likes to pull the classic free houses trope of a surprise like ambush out of nowhere, and it really fucks with me, and I don't like it. Like they kind of do the same thing with the Bridget and um, the, sorry, the Petra and. Bernadetta paralogue, where it's like you're playing through it and then out of nowhere, oh by the way, Catherine, I'm like, oh my god, why do you do this? I really don't like it and like obviously, you know, genealogy had the same problem. I don't like it there either. I just don't I personally don't like it with Fire Emblem feel the need to, you know um surprise you with such a massive twist, because you know like <sighs> with um like you know why did I only do 30? Maybe I'm weakening it up from someone. But like, you know, with, um... I don't mind if it's like a small company, but when you throw in a unit like Catherine, who's extremely powerful, it's just like, good lord. Same with the Death Knights, like, you throw him in there, it's just like, come on! Get a... come on! Yeah, we got Mariana helping us out. Oh, we got, oh yeah, we got Thor on. <laughs> yeah, there's one thing I like about Dorothea, again. Dorothea, thing I like about the likes of Dorothea and, um... What's his face? Huber is some of their spells have additional range, which is very useful. Yeah, then the yeah, there, there goes. Yeah, we can take that out of the other village with four, I suspect. But that first, we got Caspar. Go, he's going to go brawling. Um, yeah, here we go. Iron Gauntlet. Before, yeah, again, once he starts going down the grapple line, it really, really helped him in my case. Because here comes the critical. <laughs> and just punch the shit out of everything. Gauntlets are really damn cool. Imagine one time they just literally pull out Wolverine claws. It's like, <laughs> it's like, Pach! and you got Ferdinand von Eyer being Ferdinand von Eyer. Oh, he doesn't have his rapier, which is a shame. But yeah, flying units really help because they can just traverse all the types of terrain. <laughs> but obviously, you know, physic is great here too. The villagers aren't anything to worry about, and even then, they're not your primary target. So just focus um, your efforts elsewhere. And there goes four on, yeah. Even like the way Thunder looks in this, like again, the, the blue beam and the electric sparks coming off it, it's just really damn cool. It's like something Dragon Ball Z related, sort of. Oh, I'll take the extra magic, yeah. I think I saved one, yeah, I saved one. Thank you. I can't remember what you get for saving them all, but you get something, you know, it's always just worth it to save them. And even again, I like that, you know, I appreciate Fire Emblem game, but the green units aren't fucking morons. And, you know what? I think one of the best games to do that was freaking Radiant Dawn. Why? Because when you're the dawn, when you're um, you know, with your crime your own night side, or like you know, when you've got uh, or current or you know, you're telling the Dawnbringer what to do, they're not a bunch of morons. They're actually decent. They actually have decent stats. I'm like, oh my god, thank you. You know, Radiant Dawn was the one game that really get that right. You know, the three houses does it pretty well for the most part. There is the occasional dumbass unit, but what you know, it happens. It's just usually the GBA were the worst. Like, the GBA were the worst with dumb units. I couldn't stand it. Oh, and Awakening was pretty bad too. Yeah, let us not forget Awakening. Ay, 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 ay. So, just block off that entrance and have Edelgard be ready. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that's Steel Axe Plus. That's gonna fucking hurt. Provided she can double. So, yeah, he's after him. It's only, yeah, it's only 9 damage. That's, he can survive enough for attack. And even the villagers will move. Yeah, there he goes. So I'm glad it was not like, oh, it's like 12 times 2. It's like, well, 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 that's just great. 
Yeah, like this village, I think he'll move to the bushes because he actually wants to um, hide and, you know, not get killed. So props. Okay, it's not a double, but 29, you know. That is a lot. That's that's a lot of damage. Just soften them all up. Yeah, what are these people on? Like, what on earth are they on? They must have been smoking something really bad. Yeah, this guy was smart enough to hide behind a breakable wall. He's after Geralt, and Geralt's like, whatever. Oh, okay, apparently Geralt's slow as shit. But doesn't really matter when it's zero times two, because remember, zero times anything is zero. And even here, it's like, oh, nope. Got him. Even this chart shoulder ain't too bad. He's after Ferdinand von Eyre. And Ferdinand's like, get the fuck out of here. Again, if you know what you're doing beforehand, and again, there is also treasure to collect. So again, there's a lot to do in this chapter, and that's the thing. There's a lot to do, but because of what happens with the Death Knight, there's not a lot of time to do it. And again, that's another thing Free Houses likes to do. It likes to kind of overload you with stuff to do at one point, and it can get kind of irksome for me. I mean, I'm not too... Again, I'm not... It's not too bad, because again, as playing... You know, by playing games like Conquest, I've got much better when it comes to enemy uh, player phase and just doing as much as I can within that time frame, rather than... Because it used to be a lot more defensive fireman player and just kind of let the enemy will them, like come towards me and just absolutely destroy, let them, prefer them to uh, attack me and then they, I can just whittle them down. But these days I'm more a case of kill them before they even get a chance to move. I'm a lot more aggressive. Because some fireman games, oh, because Conquest is very much built like that. It's like either you're aggressive or you're fucked. Because, yeah, the, and again, in a game like this, it's, well, I can imagine the same. Because again, the enemies are relatively strong. Oh, oh it's the librarian. The one giving commands in the back. I'm certain it's Tomas, yeah. The name, hey, hey, the name is Tomas, yeah. So, one. Nope. And two. He got me though, but. Down he goes. Whew. Thank you. Yeah, so we saved him. So, obviously, you want. There's cert certain enemies will go after certain villages, and you just gotta save him. So, Hubert should be able. Yeah, he should be able to get that dude. Yeah, gotta love those range spells. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Literal death, because he's dying. <laughs> Don't tell me these villagers in case if you have to kill them, because they'll just keep fighting unless you actually go in and stop them. Nope. Again, Byleth. Oh, yeah. I think I made Byleth. Wait, was it Byleth already an assassin? I can't remember, but I think Byleth's an assassin. Uh, a thief. Now, a thief. I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. So, yeah, have Marianne go in and help us out. Oh man, she did not say. Oh, she thought about Linhar again. Like, nope. <laughs> she did not take well to that. Now we get we, again. Marianne will eventually become a permanent member of the team, at least on Silver Snow. Because the thing with Marianne is, I got so close to recruiting her on Crimson Flower, but once you make the decision to go with Edelgard, you can't go back to the monastery, and anyone who's not with you ain't coming back. Whereas Silver Snow, I could go back to the monastery, and literally, the, the moment I went back to the monastery, talked to Marianne. Oh, she wanted to join with me. It's like okay, yeah. So, yeah, we get Marianne on the other pathway, at least, and I'm going to try and make her a Holy Knight, because, you know, she has a... I suppose she's, like, specialised in writing, or at least I'm going to try my best to make her a Holy Knight, because, again, it just makes sense. Lenhart's the bishop, Marianne the Holy Knight. I'm a, hell, Mercedes is the bishop. I'm going to try and make her Grimory. Dorothy is the dancer. <laughs> and Hubert's warlock. Yeah, I, I did not invest into his right. I didn't realize at the time I should have invested. Again, it's funny looking back because yeah, again, because of the video I'm working on, I did look into like their ideal class lines and all that jazz. And it's funny. I mean, granted, you know, Wyvern, aside unless you're a magic focus unit, it's pretty much just Wyvern Lord everyone <laughs> for the most part. But you know, it was interesting to see okay which unit works with this and and why. You know, I thought that was really interesting to actually look into. It was like obviously. Like, like, Bernie's a weird one because she's got so many negative fields. Oh, oh, she activated that again. Nice one. Where trying to become a physical unit for her is a bit iffy. But obviously, you know, because of her lance and riding, it's e uh, she can easily work as a paladin. But also because flying neutral, she could probably work as a Pegasus Knight too. Maybe with an all because, yeah, she has a minus in axes. But even then, I, re I reckon you could work around it. But it, it depends. I reckon if you just invest enough into them, you can work around it. So, yeah, over we go. No, we need to get him right in his face with the something sword. Sword or axe? Oh, it looks like it's going to be the axe. Yep, it's the axe. And again, it's so weird. Pegasus is like wielding an axe. You, you, could, you told me this a couple of years ago, I would have thought you were chatting bullshit. It's like, you mean Wyverns? No Pegasus. You mean Wyverns? No Pegasus. You mean Wyverns. I will not argue with this again. So yeah, and that's that. 
And we'll just keep, yeah. What are you doing here? Dare I even ask? Yes, I, I fool. I am not Tomask. <laughs> it was I, Solon. And Solon's a weird boss. His magic output is amazing, but holy shit, is he slow and frail? And he looks like, yeah, he looks like Garnet and Iago fused together. Not a nice combination, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I was hiding when Gero Mark looking up their porn stash in the library. Oh, all that fan art. Oh my. <laughs> Oh boy. On the Black e all right, on the Black Eagles route, this map in particular definitely has a bit more weight to it because of all the stuff and because of what happened. Yeah, there, there, there he comes. I'm just like, yeah. It's like, yeah. I didn't exactly bring the lots of ruin with me. Must be an ally of Tomas. So I didn't exactly plan for this, you fuck faces. I thought I was just going to rescue the villagers, but no. Granted, you know, next time around I can easily plan for this. It's just, I hate when Farman does this on the first go, where they implement such a big twist. I wouldn't mind if it was like, just he, he respawned a bunch of cavaliers and stuff like that. I'd be like, okay, I'll just deal with him. It's like, no, it's the fucking Death Knight. Thanks. Again, yeah, that's just me personally. I don't like nasty surprises like that. I don't mind respawning units, provided A, it's, they don't attack on their face, and B, it's not someone so unbelievably strong. That is ridiculous. I mean, with the Black Knight, they at least hinted towards him because he was in the same chapter cutscene at the beginning, so you knew he was going to come. And even then, he doesn't, like, you know, uh, yeah. So with him, it's, you know, you knew he was coming, whereas Death Knight is like, mm, no clue. Oh, yeah. there he goes. I know it's also the Knights and the Warriors in this game or really like to use Gambits, the enemy versions at least. That's what I've noticed at least. <sighs> right, so, who's next? I'm going to stand at this fire because why not? It's like, Ha! Huh. Okay then. Um, poor Dorothea got burned. <laughs> poor magic. Again, sorry, I meant to say poor knights again, Hubert. You don't stand a chance. To be fair, knights against the most magic units don't stand a chance because they're slow, most magic units are decently fast, and they have like no res at all. Yeah. There's the hand axe. <laughs> Yeah, Edgar's like, whatever. I'm actually interested if I, because again, I've seen that magic growth, and oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> I've seen her magic growth. I do want to know. I think I. Yeah, just going normal. Uh, I do want to know. Um, what would you call it? How well a magic focus Edelgard will work. And you know, well, yeah, go me. Dodge and crit. Because fuck you, Freddy Sideways. It's just, yeah, it's just interesting in that regard. Because, yeah, mo you wouldn't expect. Again, okay, most units you can tell what they're thinking. Like, would they start as a magic class? They're going to stay as a magic class. Rarely just like a met, like, uh, you know, stuff like that. But obviously, you know, with Edelgard, it's like, yeah, she's a physical class with acts, which is like, but she's got 45% magic growth and a budding talent and reason. It's like, ha! Huh. You know, you know, it's just kind of like, ha! Huh. You wouldn't suspect that. I mean, for a character like Robin or Byleth, I can imagine because Avatar, you want them to both go both ways. Go both ways. But in this case, it's like, yeah, this is, this is interesting. It's like, like, it would be interesting if, if, like, let's say they do a FE7 remake, and, you know, because, um, let's say they do the thing where they employ, oh, nice dodge, uh, they employ a magic and a strength stat separately. So, let's say, Ellawood, like, because, again, he had a decent res stat for a physical unit. Re sorry, res, res, uh, res growth. So, let's say Ellawood had a high magic growth, so he could use, like, and it gave him 11 swords, and suddenly Ellawood's a lot more useful. Or better yet, and then he gets, like, you know, the shock stick. Well, he's, you know, because... You know, it all depends on how they work around FE7 Remake. That's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where Fire Emblem goes with here. I wouldn't be surprised if either we don't see a game for a while, or it's just a remake uh, and stuff like that. But anyway, we'll talk more about that next time. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Next time we come back, we are going to finish up this chapter, deal with this lot, and have an encounter with the Flame Emperor of all people. But until then, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, and goodbye.